Hi, are you sitting on a million dollar hobby? Hi, I'm Victoria Wick, and I want to share with you how I turned my hobby into a multi million dollar business. Okay, there we go. Okay, since I was a little child, I've always liked cute, beautiful, adorable jewelry because that always made me uh, feel special. You know, my mom, uh, parents would bring me something really special from a trip or your birthday, graduation, all those amazing days that are memorable to me. I got something really pretty and sparkly. And uh, when I grew up and I was buying things to gift and so forth, uh, they were just ugly, boring, gaudy jewelry and they were very expensive. And I knew there was a market for affordable, adorable jewelry that most people want, but I just didn't know how to monetize it. I did not know if there was a market that was gonna be big enough or maybe I thought maybe I was the only one that really liked this. So I decided I'm gonna kind of test my idea out because I knew that if I could make this a go, that could be a really big business. So I went out looking for customers. Um, I wanted to find out where they are, where do they shop, what do they want, you know, where do they play, all those places where I could be efficient in marketing my, my jewelry designs. And if I found them, how much will they pay for them? So I went to the local department stores, you know, talked to managers, assistant, assistant managers, and asked them, you know, you guys see customers a lot all the time. What's your most popular style? And I, you know, could you take some time to look at my sketchbook? Uh, I know you're busy, but if you can give me some feedback, you know, would, would your customers buy it? And if so, what would they pay for that? And I wanted them to be very, very honest. And I went to all the local stores. I, and whenever I was traveling on vacation, even I would take my sketchbooks and I would ask them if they would do the same thing. I did the same thing with uh, any of the charity events I went to. Wherever women gathered in large groups, I went and asked questions and I got some feedback. I would go back and um, you know tweaked my designs a little bit and then I would do it all over again. So I did it many times until I knew I had something that was kind of marketable by a wide audience. I mean, wide as far as I was concerned, it was just a few hundred people probably within about six month period. Um, I also focused on why people buy jewelry, not what they buy. Remember, they buy jewelry to mark those incredible milestones to make, you know, jewelry is supposed to make you feel amazing, you're special, you've accomplished something, things that are timeless that you're going to pass on to next generations. So uh, think about that. I always think about that uh, Maya Angelou's saying, people will forget what you've said, but they will never forget how you made them feel. Jewelry is supposed to make them memorable, you know, feel that special moment. So I focused on that type of jewelry and, um, and, and all of my marketing messages said so. I found customers all over the world. I've sold them in every continent, you know, Australia, Europe, Eastern Europe, Latin America, North America. And I've sold to places like, you know, Harrods, London, some of the most famous places in Japan, Hong Kong, all those places. I ended up doing, I went from zero to $500 million in sales. I did online sales, department stores all over the world, specialty stores, cruise ships, airport gift shops. Um, I was on HSN for almost 20 years. And now I've been on Shop HQ for five years and I'm still on it every month. So what are the main takeaways here? This is, by the way, me on HSN uh, with the Today's Special Value, just so that, you know, Today's Special Values usually have to do like a million dollars for the day. So I had, I had that that day and that was that. Emotional connection is everything. Um, key to success in everything you do if you're in business. People want to feel special. They want to be relevant. Um, they want to you know, basically feel like they're spending their money in the right places for the right reasons. Second takeaway is follow your dream, not the money. Test and get some feedback. You know, after you have worked on your passion for all that time, you deserve to do it right. You deserve to make sure that you don't make mistakes. So keep taking it, taking feedback and keep on tweaking it until you get it right. And when you do, and you have that gut feeling that you might be sitting on that million dollar hobby, come call me, talk to me. I have uh, started this podcast called Million Dollar Hobbies Podcast. I can either kind of diagnose your business on the podcast, or you can tell us how you go about doing this and we want to track you. Uh, so go to milliondollarhobbies.com and you can sign up as a guest. There's a little form there. And you can also sign up for my book, upcoming book on this. And then if you just want to check out my story about how I went from a 
Im poor immigrant with 30 bucks in my pocket to where I'm at today, you can go to victoriawick.com and um, check that out. Thank you so much for um, staying with me and uh, until next time. Bye-bye.